Ladies and gentlemen, my name is M.A. Splenobi with the Splenobi Wrestling Network, and welcome to Singularity, our second ever pay-per-view. This show is going to be a special one, because the show is going to indeed be for, well excuse me, the main event of the show is indeed going to be the third party championship, Jaws versus Octavian, that's going to be a special match right there. I don't know what's going on with the globe right now. Also, a quick apology about the fifth episode of SWN. It had some copyrighted music and YouTube did not like it at all, so I went ahead and just took it off. Uh, if you want a little summary of that, feel free to message me. But today is the second ever pay-per-view, and we're going to be kicking it off with a bang here in the SWN arena. That's a lot of explosions. For the pre-show, we're going to be having a six-man match over the top rope between six competitors who want to make themselves known in this competition. Let me open up my Twitch page real quick. I don't even have it open yet. Six-man battle royale over the top rope between Gabe Newell, Agent 47, Luca V. Law, Alexander Boy, Whamu, and Mr. Bodyguard. And this is going to be kicking off the show, and then we'll start up the pay-per-view. Oh, crap. Uh... Take control and press the gay Ben. Gay Ben, gay Ben, gay Ben, gay Ben. It looks like Gabe Newell has a little thing on the side of his face. You blame face scanning for that. And I just realized I don't even have my announcements open. So coming down to the ring right now is Gabe Newell. You all know him and love him. He's got a little black thing on the side of his face, but uh, I'm sure that's just like a pyro incident. Either from the Pyro on our stage or the Pyro in Team Fortress 2, either one. And where did I put announcements? Here they are. Come on. Making his way to the ring from Seattle, Washington, weighing in at worth the weight, Gabe Newell. That's very true, he did indeed. I'm gonna have to rely entirely on that text-to-speech thing to hear your comments, because I can't have the announcements open at the same time. And, it make, and now our next competitor, making his way to the ring from Romania, weighing in at 187 pounds, the Hitman Agent 47. Agent 47, for being such a like excellent hitman, has been in the lower card lately. He's not exactly made much of a name for himself. But here he's here to prove that he can play with the big boys. And don't take that the wrong way, but this bald bastard can fight, and he can kill. And remember, killing, totally not illegal in SWN. Our, our GM is death, for God's sake. If somebody dies, he'll just bring him back, unless he really doesn't like him. He's making his way rather casually to the ring. Remember, this is a six-man over-the-top rope battle royale. That means if your feet touch the ground after going over the top rope, you are eliminated, and the last man in the ring wins. There's somebody just entering our arena. Oh, no, he's leaving now. I don't know where he's going. Agent 47 wearing that signature suit. And those buttons are very distracting. What's that fold in the back of his jacket? You know what, I'm just gonna move on with my life and we'll move on to our next competitor in the meantime. Damn it, I didn't even hear what that one said because I was talking over it. And now, making his way to the ring.
from Cardis, Greece. Weighing in at 130 pounds, Luca V. Law. Luca, uh, no, now known for being a really good manager, if, if not an underhanded manager. But hey, I can appreciate that. He's a. Uh, you win matches, and uh, if your manager does his job, it doesn't matter if it's if it's not like to the rules. As long as he does his job, it should be all right. Look at that jacket. That jacket was tailored the night before Luca's debut. Handcrafted by one of his seamstresses. Luca is the Earl of Cardis, so he has 30 live-in seamstresses. And our next competitor. Oh my god, it's going insane. Ladies and gentlemen, making his way to the ring from New York City. Weighing in at 113 pounds. Boyo Alexander Man running down to the ring. Oh, he is hype, if you will. Wearing that very piratey jacket. Sliding into the ring. He's gonna pinball around. God, I wish I could. I wish I could see the. Com okay, you know what? I need to do something about the comments. But before the match starts, I need to do something about that. I guess during the intros, I won't be able to see any uh, any comments because I'm reading the announcements. But once the match starts, I'll be able to read them. Oh God! Look how shiny he is, making his way to the ring from ancient America. Whammo! Weighing in at 253 pounds. Making his way rather camply to the ring. And that towel over his head, I think it's supposed to be a hood, but it's very clearly a towel. It's a... Uh... <laughs> Whoop! Almost dropped my announcement pad. Whammo dancing in a rather JoJo fashion. Then again, those pillar men are quite known for their poses. wamu has got some heavy, heavy leg wear going on right there. And some veins. Holy crap, maybe we should check. Well, I guess steroids don't really count. We do have the, like, the world's strongest man on our roster. And now, making his way to the ring from the good old... USA, Mr. Bodyguard. Mr. Bodyguard, fresh off of his last saving of the president, is ready to save his career. I mean, this isn't for his career, but he's not been doing well so far. We gotta give him credit. He is a fighter, and the man has some talent for saving lives. But can he save his own against the likes of Gabe Newell, Luca Vila, Agent 47, Boyo, and Wamu? Many of those people could kill him. But he is ready to do whatever he can to make the president look good. And hell, you gotta do a lot to do that. Anyway, there's Gabe Newell. There's Alex. And the match is underway. Whammo goes immediately for Boy, and oh my god, power bomb by Gabe Newell. Little AA by Agent 47. Gabe Newell going for that double-handed choke slam. Another pop-up power bomb by Agent 47. So far, the Splenobi Force and, and Mr. Bodyguard are not in good shape, except for Alice. Al Alice. Except for Al Alex, who turns it around on Whammo, getting him on the ropes. The former co-op champion could be going out. No, right hand by Whamu thrown down. He is a heavy bastard. And at 113, I, I don't remember his weight, but his, that light person just can't lift him. 
Did I close Twitch? Am I an idiot? All right, looks like Luca is going to be throwing 47 into the ropes here. And same with Gabe Newell. And Alex is actually over the ropes. Could we see our first elimination here? Doesn't look like it. And there's that big uh, suplex there. A Russian like sweep. I'm just getting my Twitch open. Luca's on the ropes now. A huge suplex. Holy crap. Mr. Bodyguard lifting Gabe Newell. That arm drag reversal by Alex into that big sweep. Luca is gone. Luca is the first one eliminated by Agent 47. Luca can't be happy with that being the first one eliminated is embarrassing. Alex is hyping himself up for something. Mr. Bodyguard thrown over the ropes. Big shoulder tackle by Alex. He lifts up Whamu once again. Mr. Bodyguard in a bad position. Gabe Newell not to be messed with. Gabe Newell is quite the force to be reckoned with. Oh my god. Oh jeez, the, the horn right to the chest. Kick him in the knee. Looks like Gabe Newell and 47 are down. Gabe Newell could be in trouble here. Oh my god, they're... Oh, swinging neckbreaker. Looked like he threw his entire weight there. That's a feat. Especially for somebody like Mr. Bodyguard. Alex saving himself there. Flipping over almost impossibly. Punches Whamu, just trying to get his, his attention almost. But he's dwarfed next to Whamu. And it looks like he's going to be taking a spill here. Gabe Newell, in the meantime, throwing Agent 47 into the other secret agent, Mr. Bodyguard. Oh my god, that scoop slam. And Whamu unable to eliminate Alex. Alex with the, with the Irish whip over the top rope to Whamu. Oh my god, he, he might have Whamu here. He, his arms are like hyper extending. No, big horn to the chest once again. Agent 47 missing that kick, but. And so did Mr. Bodyguard. Gabe Newell with a DDT. Gabe Newell with another DDT. Both DDTs hit their mark on both of the secret agents. And and looks like Boy's back on the ropes. The Slunomi Forest could be completely gone. It looks like it might that he might be eliminated here. Meanwhile, Agent 47 might be taking a spill. No, Agent 47 recovers, but Boy! Boy hangs on for dear life. But Wamu is not letting him breathe here. Gonna be kicking him. And here goes Mr. Bodyguard over the top. Oh my god, and Gabe Newell inadvertently saves Mr. Bodyguard. And there's that drop onto the knee, that neck breaker. Wamu's over the top rope again. Remember, Wamu is extraordinarily powerful. But you gotta remember, he was beaten by just two random... Oh my god, just a lift leg drop there. Agent 47 in the corner here. Wamu calling for Boy to get up. Oh, we could see something big here. Big Samoan drop onto the horn. Gabe Newell's upset about something. There's that chest stomp. Throwing Alex over the ropes. This could be it for Alex. In fact, I'd be surprised if he stays in after that huge, like, impalement. Agent 47 still making a claim to stay in. Huge, huge backbreaker. Oh my god, Alex is still in. Alex with the Irish whip over the over the ropes again to Whamu. Meanwhile, Mr. Bodyguard actually making some progress here. Another another shoulder tackle to Alex. Reversal by Alex. A needy T by Mr. Bodyguard. Huge, huge urinage by boy. Oh, elbow drop from the top rope onto Wamu. Of 
Forgive me if I miss any of the finishing moves. I uh, don't have my list open. I forgot to get my laptop, so... This is a very improvised episode right now. Double choke slam by Mr. Bodyguard and Gabe Newell. And there was a huge knee sweep by Boy. Mr. Bodyguard over the ropes now. Gabe Newell allowed Agent 47 to get up. Oh my god. Neckbreaker by Alex. I don't even know how he did that. Oh, hold on. Mr. Bodyguard. Mr. Bodyguard is not even over the ropes. But luckily, he, didn't, he avoided that. Oh my god! Rising tide, my boy! On, but he hit Gabe Newell by mistake. He was aiming for Whamu, but he hit Gabe Newell. Meanwhile, Mr. Bodyguard about to get eliminated by by Whamu, who changed his opponent since Boy turned his attentions maybe purposefully to Gabe Newell. It looked like it was an accident, but Gabe Newell. It looks like he could be in trouble here. Same with Mr. Bodyguard, who is currently being pushed by both Agent 47 and Whamu. Gabe Newell looks like he's holding on quite well. And Mr. Bodyguard, against all odds, just stays in. It's unbelievable. Oh, he lets Gabe Newell recover. Oh my god! What the hell? Oh my god! Over the shoulder toss by Boy to Gabe Newell, tossing the man right over the top rope. Unbelievable strength by Boy. Got Whamu in a chokehold now. Meanwhile, Agent 47 being pushed by Mr. Bodyguard. Looks like Whamu's gonna hold on, make his way out, and it looks like so will Agent 47. Mr. Bodyguard not exactly making any progress. Another swinging neck breaker by Boy. I should have brought my... Where'd I put my drink? I brought a drink down. I didn't even, like, bring it with me. Wrenching on the head there with his fists. Trying to disorient Whamu. Big takedown. Once again, with those fists trying to almost crush the skull of Whamu. I don't know if that would work. After all, Whamu, like, was totally fine fighting with no eyes. Crushing the back. And meanwhile, Agent 47 pushing on Mr. Bodyguard. But I'm far more interested in this, like, God versus Demigod situation. Sweeping the leg. Alex is down. Reminder that there's only four people in the ring, but only two people have been eliminated so far. That's why there was six people. Boy could be out here after all that effort to eliminate Gabe Newell. After all, he already wasted his finisher. Well, I mean, he technically didn't because he used it to eliminate Gabe Newell. Looks like neither one of these people are going to be eliminated. We look like we're at, like, a stalemate here. No, that's all right. I know, I know where the finisher list is. It's just if I take it down, I won't be able to read chat. Whamu once again over. And this time, Mr. Bodyguard in the corner. They are, like, very concentrated in that corner right now. Oh my god, Mr. Bodyguard going up. Mr. Bodyguard is being pushed over the top rope. No one knee to Agent 47. He's still in this. This time, Agent 47 on the outside. Whamu still being punished on the ropes. Another right hook by Whamu. Whamu's got the upper hand now. Throws him into the corner. Trying to go for a boy here, but he almost went for Mr. Bodyguard. Now they're doing some weird thing in the corner I don't want to talk about. Boy's up top. <coughs> Boy's up top. But he reverses out of Whamu's grasp there. But throws him back over. Whamu is not finished yet. There's a needy T by Mr. Bodyguard. Boy! Boy going for a big side slam there. Tossed over Whamu. Mr. Bodyguard like just tangled up in Whamu for a second there. Oh my god. Pedigree power bomb there. Underhook power bomb. Boy trying something, but he's having trouble actually getting it to work. And that might cost him as that big snap mare going into the neck wrench by Whamu. See, in rival companies, you'll never see a pre-show match quite this exciting. 
boy being sat up by Wamu very lightly. Oh my god, did you see the drop kick by Agent 47 onto Mr. Bodyguard? What strength. That's what happens if you pay attention to, to one group who isn't getting anywhere. You miss spots like that. All right, he's getting up now. Oh my god, Agent 47 with a DDT right to the horn. A stomp by Boy. Looks like Agent 47 and Boy know that Whamu is the biggest threat here. What on earth just happened? I don't even know. There's a takedown. Oh my god, we've got blood. We've got blood in the pre-show. Big kick to Whamu. Might have hit Agent 47's hand there. But just imagine in one of those big networks if there was blood in the pre-show. Just imagine the main show. Big kick by Agent 47. Boy, I don't know what he's doing. But double axe handle, sit out double axe handle by Boy there. Kick, Whamu dodges. Agent 47 misses a punch. Over the top rope goes Whamu. It looks like they're going to try and work together. Actually, Boy's just kind of staring at him. Oh my god, Agent 47! Eliminates Whamu! Who's next? Boy and, and Agent 47, only two left in the ring. Got a Luthez press by Boy. Boy getting ready to finish this. Big, big, like, big, like, big, like, big, like, 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 like. Anyway, Boy won the match, unbelievably, in an amazing fashion, eliminating two people, one of them being Gabe Newell with an over-the-shoulder toss, and that's something that you don't see every day. Anyway, let's move on to our next match, which I'm sure will, will kick off our show. Not the kickoff show, though, we already had that. This is the real show now, I'm pretty sure. Uh, never mind, it's still the pre-show. It's still the pre show. Last week, in the episode that, that never was, because, you know, it got cut because of copyright issues, we had Michael Afton against Jeff the Killer, and Michael Afton took it to the outside and beat Jeff the Killer. And this time, we've got two more killers for him to fight in a Triple Threat Extreme Rules match. But I, I, I'm sure I can get someone to help me uh, refresh my memory. Let's get the match started. Let me get my, uh, okay, so chat's gonna be, uh, not a thing for a moment. Let me just, uh, pull up my announcements. Anyway, our first competitor we all know well. Making his way to the ring. From an unknown location. Weighing at 185 pounds. Sweet Tooth. Needles Cane. Sweet Tooth, we all know him quite well. Former rival of the heavy. And former British champion. Sweet Tooth will slowly make his way down, staring down at everybody else. His hair, real fire. It may, it may look like spiked orange hair, but it is real fire. And you don't have to quote me on that. But if you do, I'll pay you. Uh, anyway, here's Sweet Tooth. I don't know why he wears that, like, weird studded leather gear. But hey, maybe it hurts. Maybe it hurts people. And I mean, Sweet Tooth looks like a person who likes to hurt people, so... And next up... Making his way to the ring from Fazbear's Family Diner, weighing in at 170 pounds, the purple guy, Michael Afton. Hold up. 
He's almost there. There he is. Here he comes now. The artist formerly known as Spring Spring Trap. Making his way down to the ring. Again, quite casually. People in suits tend to do that. And Michael Afton isn't exactly... Well, I mean, yes, he's a murderer. There's his blood-soaked blood, blood -soaked rag. But anyway, Sweet Tooth has murdered a lot more people than Michael Afton. Then again, so did Jeff. So who knows how this is going to end. And that's not even taking into account... Actually, no, to be fair, Springtrap did kill a lot of people, so... And that's not even taking into account our third competitor, who we, who we, we don't even know yet. And here they come now. All the lights are all down. Making his way to the ring. There's a, there's a fan in the, in the shadows. Here he comes, making his way to the ring. From Fazbear's Family Diner, weighing in at five pounds. The marionette, the puppet. That's right, former SWN alum and competitor in not only the Tornado Tag Team Tournament, but also the Splinomi Battle Royale, where he eliminated the most people. If I'm right, it was like seven people or eight people that he eliminated. Almost a legend in that rumble. It was a surprise he didn't win. But hey, here he comes now, the puppet. Seems to have beefed up since last time we saw him. Seems to have modernized his look. And there's also a phone call coming in. Let me just, uh... Take care of that. I'm gonna sit down again. Puppet going entirely limp, because remember, there is nothing inside of him. He is just made of cloth and a mask. Anyway, let me uh, open up chat again. And the puppet is ready, and so are his opponents. So we've got our three competitors today. The Puppet, Michael Afton, and Sweet Tooth. All of which have killed people before. All for different reasons. I mean, sometimes I do. I, I don't use Sweet Tooth with a super kick. That wasn't normal. I sometimes do. A lot of the times I make my own. But like things like uh, the Sweet Tooth and the Puppet in this match, they're cause. But I made a, I made the purple guy, and a, a lot of the people in that last match I made as well. Sweet tooth, with a weird uppercut to the back of Michael Afton. There, remember this is extreme rules. I don't know what Puppet's doing over there. He's like sizing up the ref. None of these people have any remorse. So if our blind ref found. The puppet punching Sweet Tooth, and Sweet Tooth just shrugging it off. Going into that float over DDT. I forgot to grab my drink, I didn't even think about that. Another f oh wait no! Right into a German suplex! I have... everything. As you saw, like... I had the Shinsuke entrance, so I even have the pre-order stuff. Or the special edition stuff, the NXT edition. I got the statue and everything. I made a video about that. And anyway, it looks like they're going to be taking this to the outside. There's a ladder in play. Sweet Tooth going to be going for that underhook. Oh, and right onto the stairs. And Michael Afton going for a taunt there. Trying to taunt his way into Sweet Tooth's head, but he took a little too long. Got into that big boot as, as for his troubles. Excuse my... 
rolled right over him. Potentially. Right into the corner. Sweet Tooth. Being pounded away by Michael Afton. Oh, dodged. Thrown over the top ropes. The pop who goes for the puppet instead. Michael Afton trying to take out everybody. Big punch to the puppet who goes to the outside. And Michael Afton's up top. He's going for the puppet. Big body splash. <laughs> oh. Jesus Christ. Enjoy the match for a second. I'm going to go grab my drink. It's just over here. It looks like uh, I didn't miss much put into the tree of woe, Michael Afton. Uh, oh my god. Sweet Tooth. Okay, I whispered my hashtag. Oh my god. Big body drop onto the, that apron. As everyone loves to remind us, that's the hardest part of the ring. Sorry, got to go. I live in France, so not same time. I understand. That's all right. I'll take a look. Have a great stream, bye. Thank you. See you later. Thanks for watching, by the way. All right. Back to the match. Michael Afton nearly going for that bulldog onto the ladder. Some really strong kicks there. Looks like he might be going for a power bomb onto the ladder. Bam! There it hits. Must be ringing. Sweet Tooth going for something big. Uh, he just kind of lifted him and dropped him. Sweet Tooth going for the sweet, the sweet treat right now. Oh no, he's interrupted by the puppet Russian leg sweep. I'm just gonna real quick take a look at the finishers. I should really do that before any match. Oh, pin attempt by the puppet there, only getting a one count. Pin, only a one count as well. Stuck between Sweet Tooth and the Puppet. Michael Afton fights his way out. Oh my god, here it is. Claw hold. Our, the give gift. An attempted big punch by Sweet Tooth. Discus clothesline. There's the sweet treat. Covered by Sweet Tooth. One, two. No, Puppet kicks out of the sweet treat. Drops the knee. What is Michael Afton doing? Thrown into the corner there. The puppet almost out cold. Big clothesline. Lands on the puppet. Rolling out of the ring now. Cover by Sweet Tooth. One. Two. Kicks out by the puppet again. Michael Afton starting to get up. Big punch by Sweet Tooth. But the puppet recovers in time. Looks like he's going for something big. No, shoved away by Sweet Tooth. I think he was trying to uh, get him up to that top rope. Michael Afton getting ready to size someone up. Oh, sizing up Sweet Tooth. Punch the ass. Reverse punch. Sweet Tooth has this thing down. Sweet Tooth with another sweet treat for Michael Afton. You won't get that in his ice cream truck. The puppet taking his time, almost letting him get away. <laughs> the puppet being really stupid. I think his finisher is a top rope one, so he's trying to do it to Sweet Tooth, but he just can't. 
Sweet Tooth is too heavy. Much like Ridley, he's too big. <laughs> Thrown to the corner once again. Michael Afton still got some stuff up his sleeve. Another tree of woe for the puppet's troubles. <laughs> this time it connects. Getting some... Oh my god. Okay, Sweet Tooth's back in the action. The puppet rolls out. Surprised at the lack of weapons we're seeing. I mean, we saw some ladder spots. We saw a chair... A, uh, a uh, step spot. Oh, we're, we are going to see Sweet Tooth. Oh my god. Big Samoan drop from the top. That looked like he could bust up in someone's spine. Some head slams into the ground. Sweet Tooth has this match under control against the against the purple guy and the former alum in the form of the puppet. So that's our first surprise return. So if you are drinking to this, oh my God, the puppet going for like an AA. And the purple guy going for his comeback here. Bam! He hits the bulldog. But Sweet Tooth is there to get him at the recovery with a German suplex. Rolls out. And now the puppet is all that's left for Sweet Tooth to reap the benefits of that comeback. One. Two. No, the puppet isn't done. The puppet doesn't have the energy to get up, however. The Sweet Tooth just wrenches on him. There's a nerve hold. He's locked in. This could be a tap out. I don't know how many tap outs we've seen in Splenobi Wrestling Network history. <laughs> Looks like he was going he was going for his finishing move, which was the you can't. But he's going one, two, no. Michael Afton staying in this, but Sweet Tooth is definitely in control here. Big stomp busted open. Michael Afton, not a stranger to blood, but this could be it. Two, Puppet's not in time, but he kicks out anyway. He's going to need that rag now. Big clo- That was a painful sounding clothesline. Enough to get him out of the ring. Puppet reaping the benefits. Two, Afton kicks out again. Just a reminder, we don't clean this ring. That is all real blood. Drop the knee. It's like the puppet going for some sort of lock here. <laughs> he just stomps on the puppet and gets him out. Looks like he might be going for another German. No, it's just a normal suplex here. Slam to the mat. Covered by Sweet Tooth. Just surely can't be it. The ref taking this time. Not as young as he used to be. Last episode. Sweet Tooth is truly in control in this match and just as I say that Hurricane Rana by the puppet cover by the puppet that's definitely not going to be it two no if I were these two I know they hate each other but they need to work together to take out Sweet Tooth it's just not worth it getting slammed into that into that post there Gets knees, knees for his trouble. Going for Sweet Tooth now. Neck breaker. Reverse neck breaker. Cover by Michael Afton. And he kicks out once again. This match seems like it'll go on forever. Looks like Afton's going to go for a weapon. What's Afton going to pull out? He pulls out that sledgehammer. Oh, he hits him with the sledgehammer. Michael Afton is not playing around. But Sweet Tooth has taken worse than a sledgehammer. He's gotten the scissors to the eyes. Super kick by Sweet Tooth. Downing Michael Afton. The puppet looks like he's back in this now. Got him in a, in a chokehold there. Puppet looking like he's going to defend Michael Afton now. Into that float over DDT. Michael Afton having none of it. Tossing him over the shoulder 
Sweet Tooth is out of the ring. This would be a perfect time for a finisher. But no, they just keep covering each other. One. No, kicks out at one. Sweet... Or, the puppet has had plenty of time to recuperate at the outside of the ring. Speaking of plenty of time to recuperate, Sweet Tooth is starting to get up. He looks like he got an early recovery there, even though he knows he's hurt. Tossed outside of the ring. There goes the puppet. But no, he's going to be back in with this suplex to the inside. And an opportunistic cover by Sweet Tooth broken up at one. And we got a side slam backbreaker by, by Afton. Cover. All these covers are very poorly timed. Like, he's going to kick out of this. These guys, for being killers, they sure don't know how to finish someone off. Like, the puppet got his give gifts in, but, like, didn't even try to go for give life. Got him in a nerve hold now. Looks like Sweet Tooth gets out of that with a huge clubbing blow to the legs. The puppet just throws him to the ground. That could be it. Sweet Tooth going for the cover, but his foot's like under the ropes. The ref doesn't notice because he's blind, and that is it. What an interesting ending. Uh, I don't even know what happened. Let's just, uh... So Sweet Tooth is now our best killer for some reason. And he's apparently base celebrating. And that is this match now. We're going to be moving on to our next match. And when you think about the British Championship, it's been held by the likes of Big Perp, the heavy Octavian Sweet Tooth. It's, it's huge names that have held that belt. It's, and it's not defended on the main show. It's defended on a show on, on the uh, on live shows. So, our house shows, we don't get to see that, but you do get to hear about it on our show. Speaking of which, Big Perp tonight uh, could potentially become the first person ever to hold a main show belt along with the British Championship as he is the current British Champion. And remember, as Jaws said earlier, the third party championship is going to be defended in the main event tonight against Octavian. But right now we got Briska Sirket versus versus uh, Othgard the Unbroken versus our current SWN Purple Heart Champion Lu Lin Chi. And you got to remember, I know I don't want to bring up the uh, like the inherited card, but Lu Lin Chi's father is Lu Bu, literally like the strongest man in China. But then again, you can't put it against uh, Othgar the Unbroken, literally the strongest woman in Skyrim. And we can't put it against Friska, who we can't really say is the strongest, but if we don't, I'm afraid she will kill me. So I, I really can't diss anybody like too much in this competition because they could all kill me. But I do. Ha if I don't, di if I diss the right people, I have protection by Zeke, so I'm okay. Let me just pull up the announcements. Making her way to the ring from Alternia, weighing in at 142 pounds, Briska Sirket. Briska Sirket, our, our former champion. This is her rematch clause, by the way. It just so happens that another person was thrown into the match as Upgrade the Unbroken. I believe it was last episode was able to defeat Lu Lin Chi due to the help of Luca, who was eliminated first in that battle royale earlier in the pre-show. We're on the main show now, obviously, and everything just cuts off abruptly as we get our next competitor. Ladies and gentlemen making her way to the ring 
from White Run Skyrim, weighing in at 228 pounds, Uthgird Moose Girl the Unbroken. Uthgird is finally here performing for you, if you know the words, you can join in too. And you see the audience putting their hands together because they know how to clap. I'm not, I'm not going to continue this joke. This joke went on for far too long. Anyway, Uthgard making your way for some reason with those green tinted armors, armor pads there. Those are real emeralds, and that's real steel armor. And now those are real antlers. Everything on there is real. Uthgard eyeing Briska, knowing that she's got to take out the former champion as well as the current champion. She is the underdog, believe it or not. It's so odd to think of Brit of Uthgird as the underdog in any situation, but she is tonight. And making her way to the ring. Sh from China, she is the Perp the Splenobi Wrestling Network Purple Heart Champion, Lu Lin Chi. I'm gonna oh. Alright, I don't know why it did that. It just skipped the entrance. Oh well. Oh well. This is for the Purple Heart Championship. Ref wins lol. There's our blind ref holding up the, the gold here. Well, it's not actually gold. It's made of a rare, rare purple metal that I'm not allowed to talk about. Otherwise, I will be killed. Oh, man, this job has a lot of uh, opportunities to kill me. Vriska immediately escapes the ring. Vriska strategizing here, immediately escaping the ring, allowing the other two to fight. And here she comes again now that there's been a couple of attacks onto the champion. Now taking advantage of the only woman standing, Upgird, but Lulin Chi is back up and ready to take the fight to the former champion. Big sit-out slam. Upgird taking some time to get to get acquainted in the corner. Upgird! Oh my god, Upgird! And that steel armor hits that huge Hurricane Rana. Upgird bouncing off the ropes. Into it looks like a German suplex by by Briska. Lulin, she's got her former champion in a lock, but Uthgard breaks it up with a drop kick. She wants her hands on the champion herself. Into that Fez press there, no. Into one of heavy signature moves, the stupid. Oh, my ear starting to hurt. Arm drag by by Lin Chi. But Sir Cat's got her in the back. Looks like she's going to be going for... Oh, roll up! Roll up by Lu Lin Chi. Uthgard. Uthgard breaks it up. But what an amazing opportunity there. Oh, there were shadows on the ramp for a sec. Yeah, that, that, that happens. I don't understand why it happens, but the shadows are a little weird. Going for that... For that... A little delayed suplex there. Briss got slamming her opponent to the ground. I don't know if I have finisher moves for Vriska. I don't. Do I have them for Uthgird? I don't. Great. Oh, wait, no. I have one for Uthgird. I have a few for Uthgird. What, did she just do the Cena thing? Uthgard shrugs off that, that Superman punch. Oh my god, went for a bulldog, but with, with her legs in the ropes. That that could kill some that could really hurt someone. Irish whip to the to the uh, turnbuckles. Irish whip to the other turnbuckles now. Followed by that monkey flip there. Uthgard, big slam to the ground. There's the potato.
Oh my god, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the Uthgate. That is Uthgate's finishing move, and she has Frisk on the ground, but decides to go for Lulin Chi. She's just showing off right now. Big down to the ground. Now, getting Vriska set up, but she waited far too long to set it up. One. No. She waited way too long to set up. Uthgur getting the upper hand, however, being the biggest person in this competition right now. Thrown into the ropes. Uthgur is out of the ring. Vriska, freshly hit by the Uthgate, still surviving. But she has significantly less chance of winning now that she's been hit by Upgrade's devastating finishing move. Big, huge belly-to-back suplex there. It looks like she's going for the cover. Briska could become a two-time Purple Heart Champion. Upgrade is there to break it up. Uthgird with a huge suplex onto Lulinchi. Uthgird, or Uthgird makes Riska roll out. Lulinchi thrown in that turnbuckle. What does Uthgird have planned for her? Another monkey flip, but it's reversed by Lulinchi into a German suplex. A wrenching on the helmet of Uthgird. <laughs> Vriska tries something, but unfortunately misses by a small amount by a small margin. Into that deadlift suplex. Lulin Chi getting ready to defend her title. Like she means it. Big kick to the shins. Following up, looks like it's gonna be an eight, it's gonna be a turnbuckle power bomb. Upgrade's got her hands on the champion. What are we going to see here? Up to the top rope. That's dangerous with Upgrade. Upgrade's wearing full steel armor. Huge arm drag from the top rope. The champion rolls out. Looks like we're going to be seeing another suplex by Upgrade. Oh! Oh, landing straight on the spine and neck. Looks like there was a rope break there. Getting her into that leg lock between not only her armor, but her thighs. That is probably difficult to get out of. Another cover by Uthgird. One. Two. No. Friska kicks out, almost costing Lulin Chi her championship, but giving it to Uthgird. Big kick to the back. Look at those giant gauntlets there. I didn't mean, I didn't mean that. Oh my god, we got a potato. One potato. Cover. One, two. Ladies and gentlemen, your new, your winner and new Purple Heart Champion, Uthgird the Unbroken. What an amazing display by Uthgird. Being the underdog in this match, managing to cripple both opponents enough to get the, get the three count. after that last potato. Managed to land two of those and an upgate, being the only one to land finishers. Upgird dominated this match and deserves that belt. Luca is going to be ecstatic that even though he was the first one eliminated in the pre-show, Upgird is your new face of the women's division in SWN. I want a shirt that says Potato City. It's true, all of Upgird's soup all of Upgird's special moves are suplexes. But they're named the potato in the update. And this is her championship now. She is the new face of the women's division. And speaking of new faces, let's move on to the next match. Now, uh. One thing I really don't understand is... <laughs> one thing I don't really understand is what exactly is going to happen with the Tag Team Champions. I mean, they defended their title twice over this last two, few weeks. Or they gained the title and defended it already. So they, they, they seem to think that they're untouchable. 
but Zake has told me that they got some, they got a, a team that should be able to beat them, or should at least put up a fight. Now, I don't know who that's going to be, but I sure am excited to see, and let's go. Who Zake has picked out for us to, to fight uh, the, uh, the Payday Crew for the title tonight, because apparently we are going to see them fight for the title. Alright. Uh, oh god! Ladies and gentlemen, this is unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, weighing in at a combined 606 pounds, the Terminator and Shrek, the Dream Team, making their return after at least two years of being on the shelf. These legends. Semi-finalists in the Tornado Tag Team Tournament but widely regarded as one of the greatest SWN tag teams in history. We got holy shit chance going on because nobody saw this coming. These guys are huge. And of course, they are going to be fighting these, the, uh, pill, or excuse me, the Payday Crew. I don't know why I never can get either of those names right. Shrek and the Terminator back at back again as a tag team. And here come their opponents. Ladies and gentlemen, they are the, are the Splenobi Wrestling Network co-op champions, Wolf and Chains, the Payday Crew. Here they come making their way down to the ring to Sweden. To Sweden. I'm, I'm making that hashtag to Sweden. Uh, and they are... You, you can tell they're a little bit taken off guard. But they're trying to keep their cool. After all, they do have to fight legends tonight. But let's put it this way. If if they lose, the, the, uh, the dream team is our new champion. Are our new championships. Uh, they, they are the championships, yes. They're our new champions. But if they win, they have officially beaten the most legendary tag team in history. And that definitely cements them a spot in the Hall of Fame. Which, by the way, will be happening. We will have a Hall of Fame in induction. A, f a few of them. Since we do have a small SWN history. We will have an SWN Hall of Fame. This is for the SWN Co-op Championships. It's the big gold for tag teams. There are our competitors. There's the dream team. Shrek's outfit is freaking out. It's just locked on the dream team. Our cameraman cannot get enough. Oh, that's why they're introducing them. I forgot that that tag team championship matches have introductions. Damn it. Alright, well, I messed up on that. And there's our champions, the Payday Crew. You can't tell how they're feeling because those are masks. But you can tell in their eyes that they are at least a little worried. Look at them shift uncomfortably. They can take down the Pillar Men, who are literal, like, perfect life forms. But can they take down the, an ogre and a robot from the future? After all, the Pillar Men are relics. These guys, they're now. They are legends of tomorrow, I might say. Terminator getting ready. Terminator with our first attack. Into a suplex. Lands the suplex. Shrek already hyping up the crowd. Big kick to the face by the Terminator. Into a clothesline. I'm still, I'm still so shocked that they're actually here. I never thought I'd see them again. Double axe handle. There. And as you can see, this is uh, not the same looking Terminator as before. Because the Terminator has aged. This is Pops. Terminator's aged during his time 
off of SWN. And this is Pops, the TI, the original TI-800. Uh, and he's still teamed up with Shrek, who will be getting a new movie soon. Believe it or not, Shrek 5 is on the way. So Shrek is still in his prime. Pops looks like he still has a lot of energy left in him. After all, he is a robot, so I can't really say he doesn't, because I'm sure he does. All he needs is it would be a tune-up, and he's fine. And I'm sure that's what he got preparing for this match. So far, no offense from the Payday crew. Pops has been kicking the crap out of chains. Cass would love this. Cass does not like chains, and I don't know if he's racist or something, or... Okay, Chains gets some in some offense with a shoulder tackle there. Must have hurt his shoulder, but he needs to get the hell out of there. And they need a double team. Uh, pops in order to get him down. Double axe handle. Why, why did I say double axe handle? That was a double Russian leg sweep. Looks like Wolf is going to be going for that big Sweden swing. Throws him into the turnbuckle. That's got to hurt. Kicks the knee. Oh my god, scraped to the face. That's what got what got him uh, that's what got us to see his metallic face in the first place. Throws him into the ropes. Into a flying clothesline. The crowd not happy with this outcome. Oh but pops his back up, big punch to the gut. Into another suplex? Into another suplex. There it goes. Shrek hyping up the crowd once again. The Terminator obviously knows he doesn't need a tag in Shrek just yet. Both of them are Mastodons. Both of them could potentially be future champions. And Shrek is in. Ladies and gentlemen, the legendary Shrek. Going in for that toss to the turnbuckle. Terminator's got to get out of there before he gets counted out. Kick by Shrek. Oh, big knockout punch by Shrek. In case any of you guys don't know, this is the Dream Team semifinalists in the Tornado Tag Team Tournament way back when. And former participants in the Sklonobi 30-man Royal Rumble. Which the Terminator, I think, got close to the Puppets record. We got him in a, uh, I believe that's a camel clutch of some sort. Throws him into that red turnbuckle. It was black when we bought them. Sh oh my god, Shrek just trying to rip off his mask. Shrek shows no mercy, but the crowd loves him. Because they know if he doesn't, he will, uh... He will kill them. Anyway, that's a one count by Shrek. If anything, the Payday crew is resilient, and that's what helps them win matches. However, oh. Oh, he's tried to rip off the mask again. Got that arm drag on him. Using Shrek's weight against him. Got him in that. Oh, Shrek looked like he was going to tap, but he was really lying. Shrek did not feel that at all. Looks like he's going to be going in for... Oh my god! A sit-out driver there. I guess it wasn't a driver. He just kind of slammed his head into the ground. But hey. I'm not complaining. Oh my god! Shrek! With the onion ring. Man, I hope that's actually what I named it. Because if not, I'm naming it that now. Okay, I didn't name any of his moves yet. But it's the onion ring now. It's a great idea for a move name. Chains throwing Shrek into the into the corner. That's not the corner. Sweeps the leg. Shrek falls on his face. Chains wanted something there. Oh, Shrek gets the upper hand. And it's oh my god, a huge headbutt by Chains. Shrek gets the upper hand once again with a backbreaker. Pulling chains into the middle of the ring, probably for... Yes, here it comes. The worm lands it. Cover, cover by, cover by Shrek. 
Covered by Shrek 1. No. I can't believe he kicked out of the worm. That is Shrek's signature move. If you've noticed, uh, this is actually uh, a cut-down version of the worm. They removed the full worm. He used to do the worm in a huge dance, but now he just kind of does the ending. And a cover by the Terminator now. Kicks out at one. The Shrek trying to do something. The Shrek. Accidentally kicked Shrek in the leg, but that's alright. Shrek's just like, probably reminding him to get out of the ring. Big stomp to the face. And a double axe handle onto, onto Chains' right knee. Oh my god, we got a terminating slam! Oh, we got terminating! Terminating uppercut right there. Oh, Terminator doing a little dance there. Remember, Terminator still has got... Still has plenty of moves in his arsenal. Has all the moves that he had as DLC from the previous game. Getting up. He's getting ready. You've been targeted for termination. BAM! With the same... The same... Lethality... As Bites the Dust. That's it! Ladies and gentlemen, your winners and new co-op champions, the Dream Team. Unbelievable. They debut at the pay-per-view and win the titles. And now your co-op champions could potentially be unstoppable. There we saw the onion ring. And there's the worm where Wolf tried to distract the ref, but he did it too early. And trying to get back over the rope, didn't notice the pin. But holy crap, the Dream Team takes home the gold. And there's the first terminating punch. And the final terminating spike. I gotta actually look up what those moves are called, because those are actual, actual moves from the last game. And that is it. You notice, uh... I don't even think he tried to help his teammate right there. He was too scared. And I don't think that the Payday crew were even thinking about trying to help. And there they are! Your new champions. The crowd going wild. Big hug. They have, they came back from last time being semi-finalists in the Tornado Tag Team Tournament. And now they are the champions. This has got to be the biggest moment in the Dream Team's career. My god, alright, let's move on to our next match. But that was incredible. But right now, we've got a big match coming. Big Purpose of the Heavy 2. This time, for uh, once again, for the SWN Championship. This time, Big Perp going in as the challenger. And then we still got our main event coming up. Octavian versus Jaws for the third party championship. And we're gonna see which big man gets the title tonight. This could be Big Perp's chance to make history. And here we go. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the SWN World Heavyweight Championship. Here he comes now, our resident in purple. The man who got me the copyright strike last episode. Our. Oh, he is the British champion. Big Perp making his way to the ring on his bike. He is ready. He's got a special new entrance for everybody. As he's going to be coming down to the ring intimidatingly. Hitting that blood red carpet.
Big Perp wants his title back and will do anything to get it back. From the beast that is the heavy. From the Russian bear. That makes it sound like it's a porn thing. Don't 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 read into that. Anyway, big perp, the face of the saints. And former face of the company. Walking around the ring now. Waiting for his opponent to come down. And here he comes now. Ladies and gentlemen, your champion, the heavy. It's funny to see. I like how his uh, Twitter, Twitter uh, poll is Hoovy Sandwich. Sandwich, excuse me. But he's making his way down to the ring in a Russian style. There's a four. He's, he's declaring that Team Fortress 4 will be coming out, but not 3, because he knows his boss, Gabe Newell, is watching. Slides over the ropes. Someone touched his gun. Maybe it was that man with extremely squinty eyes. Maybe it was that little girl. Who knows? Either way, they are going to get heavied. Bam! I don't like that color in this lighting, but it's supposed to be dark red. In the challenger corner, weighing in at the weight of the universe from the Paradox Skyscraper, he is the British Champion, Big Perp. And from Khabarovsk Cry USSR, weighing in at exactly 300 pounds, he is the SWN World Heavyweight Champion, Misha the Heavy Weapons Guy. So you can see in the sheens what color it's supposed to be. Ref takes the title. He is now the champion. Congratulations, Ref. Go over to Big Perp, show him the title he lost. He is ready to take it back. There's the title. And everyone ready for a possible match of the night comp contender. And off they go. Immediately heavy with that German suplex. Heavy just taking it to Big Perp. Sweeping the legs down of the champion. Grabbing him. And looking like he's going for a double-handed choke slam. He lands it. By the way, just want to clarify something real quick. I'm not saying the ref is blind because he's Asian. That would be racist. I'm saying he's blind because he is legally blind. The man cannot see. Just saying. Anyway, there's a big punch by Big Perp. Everything's big with these two around. Heavy going back in the ring to get hit by a very weak kick by Big Perp. Allowing the Heavy to get control again with that arm drag over the shoulder. These two men, extremely large big boys going at it. Sweep of the leg by Big Perp. Another double-handed choke slam. Hitting the ground. This is a lot more two-sided. Oh my god, looks like he's going for a deadlift powerbomb here. That's one deadlift powerbomb. Straight to the heavy. Big Perp calling out all those in the USSR. Big slam to heavy's left arm. Picks him up for a neck wrench. Don't expect anything too, like, fast-paced in this match. 
<coughs> these are two big men, and they are going to try to methodically slam each other and keep each other down, like with this. Big Burt making a statement there. Big Perp is tossing the heavy over his shoulder. Big Perp has immense strength and already going for the cover. Looks like he missed the cover there, but obviously Heavy isn't going to go down that easy. Heavy powering through that with his amazing strength. Big punch to the gut, leading the Heavy into something else. Looks like he's going for another German suplex. No! Big backdrop suplex there. Heavy's tossed into the turnbuckle by the recovering Big Perp. Slammed into the turnbuckle again into a German suplex of Big Perp's own. And looks like Big Perp going for another cover. He wants that title now. Two. No. Heavy dodges that weak kick into a German suplex of Heavy Zone. Heavy looks like he's going to go for a nerve hold. Locks it in there. Heavy now taking control. He's going to go for a deadlift suplex. Another nerve hold. Now we just get to stare at the Heavy's ass. Heavy wearing jeans. Does he wear jeans? Oh, here we go. Crit punch. The heavy celebrating. As he knows, this can only lead to one thing. Stomp down the heavy. Looks like he's going to be lifting up Big Perp. No, he wants, he wants more of them. He doesn't want to end this match now. He wants to prove it. Oh my god. Oh my god. No way. Is the heavy going to... Oh, a huge knee slam. I thought for a second he was about to break the ring. I was like, he didn't get three finishers. One. Two. No, Big Perp isn't finished. If the Heavy wins, he's also our longest reigning SWN champion. Fun fact. Wrenching on the neck there. Slam to the ground. Gets him into that camel clutch. The Big Perp has, is having none of it. Big Perp! Big Perp! Oh! That was definitely illegal, but the ref is blind, like I said. Oh, that was actually pretty sick. Never seen that one before. That's a, It's nice to see that Big Perp's still adding moves to his repertoire. Big Perp. Big Perp. Looks like he's going to go for a big punch to the side of Heavy's head. Unprotected by anything. Big stomp to the Heavy's gut. Protected by quite a bit. Banging the world's fattest man. Oh my god, here we go. Flip pile driver. Big Perp locks him into the ropes even. Big Perp thinks that's enough. But but is it enough to take down the Heavy? Two. No, the Heavy kicks out at two. Neither one of them have used their finishers yet. We saw a crit punch and we saw a flip pile driver. We could see a Pujisa bomb. No, it's a urinate side slam there. A heavy. Hyped up. Getting him into the corner. Looks like he might go for something big. A bunch of crit punches. Look at all those crit punches. That is six crit punches. Seven crit punches. 
and a drop kick. A flying drop kick by the heavy and seven crit punches. And here comes a deadlift suplex. Seven crit punches. Oh, the heavy. And following up with an eighth. The heavy headbutting the turnbuckle. He's ready to finish this after his ninth crit punch of the match. No, but Big Purp isn't ready for him to finish it. <laughs> Big Purp going for a pump handle. Pump handle flipping slam with a punch that we saw earlier. And a kick. Big Purp getting out of nine crit punches. Into his own, own nerve hold. Slams the heavy down. This would be a good time to use that, that senton. Looks like he might be trying it. No. He wants to pull him more to the center of the ring. So that he can hit hit the heavy in the gut again. No, that time it was just sternum. Oh, that's got to hurt. Big perp with the two. Sweet. I don't know why I said it like that. Big perp. Big kick to the gut, sitting the heavy up. Into another nerve hold. When I told you this match was going to be slow paced, I was right, except for that one time when heavy threw seven crit punches and a drop kick. A little surprised at Big Perp's lack of wanting to hit his finisher. Maybe he doesn't feel it's time yet. Maybe he wants to break the ring, who knows? Oh, busted the heavy open. This could be it for the heavy. Slammed to the arm. Heavy is busted open, but heavy has gotten out of, of things when he was busted open before. Big, big straight arm punch. Oh my god, here we go! Bautista bomb! That could be it. That could definitely be it. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, and still, no, it's not over yet. Big Perp kicks out of the Putista bomb. Heavy is not happy. Look at Heavy stomping on his opponent's head. He is upset. Rolling him down to the center of the ring for a headbutt. That bloody forehead, wearing that crimson mask. Lifting up Big Perp for something interesting here. Trying to dislocate those shoulders. Slamming him back down. It looked like Big Perp had it in the bag for a second there. But hey, Putista bomb out of nowhere. And we're getting the 10th crit punch of the match. And that officially could be it. And going for another stomp. Heavy is not done. Now, Big Perp wears the crimson mask. And here, Heavy knows it's over. Heavy knows it's over. Here it comes. Ladies and gentlemen, Putista Bomb. <coughs> going for that final cover, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, three, and still your SWN heavyweight champion Misha the heavy weapons guy what a match 10 crit punches 10 my god or should I say by god what a match it could have gone either way but the heavy got him right where he wanted him there at the end after that first Putista bomb we knew that Big Perp had something taken out of him. And by that second one, we knew the match was over. Our local wrestling review gives it a perfect 10. There's that amazing little uh, knee smash by the heavy. I also want to see, I hope they have a re repeat for the, the comeback. So that was a Cesaro comeback, but it also was nine crit punches. 
No, but there's a Putista bomb for his troubles. One, two, and I'm pretty sure he kicked out of this one. Nope, that was the last one. The Heavy retains his title. And becomes the first ever person to defend the SWN Championship and the longest reigning current SWN Champion. I didn't mean it like that. Obviously, he's the longest reigning current SWN Champion because he's the only current SWN Champion. But he is the longest reigning SWN Champion so far. Now, Heavy's going to get that stitched up. There goes Big Perp. You'd see him falling out of the ring. But anyway, we're going to head on to our main event for tonight. Our last match in Singularity before we end it off. For the SWN Third Party Championship, Octavian versus Jaws. Now, Jaws somehow got one in with the Death Authority to get this match as not, o not only on the card, but in the main event. No matter what happens in this match, this is going to elevate the hell out of both of these men as main eventers. Hell, who knows? Maybe maybe uh, Jaws can use that um, use that uh, stuff he's got with the Death Authority to maybe get a main title shot as well. We can see our first double champion. But I don't want to get too ahead of myself, and I also don't want to give uh, Zake ideas. Let's do this. I don't remember where Octavian's from. <laughs> <laughs> I also don't... Oh, wait, no, I remember now. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the SWN Third Party Championship. Here comes the challenger first. Wearing that black mask. There's some pyro. Here comes our challenger for tonight, Octavian. Him and Jaws have had some real disagreements lately, and both of them want that title. I've walked for miles in this pit of danger. But it's safe to say that this is going to be a big match. Making his way slowly down to the ring. This is his first main event appearance in a pay-per-view, as is Jaws, technically. I'm sick of all these people talking out their heads. I've never understood a damn thing that they've seen. Going under the ropes. There he is. This is going to be a big, big match. I think I've said that a few times now, but I, I can't think of what to say because I can't introduce them until the title is shown off. Danny, can you remind me where where uh where Octavian is from? Like what what place he's from? Anyway, here comes our champion, our third party champion, Jaws, wearing that belt just underneath his jacket. He's the TP champion. Really just, the crowd is booing him like hell, because they know that he has got the upper hand in this match here. But Octavian is known to pull things out at random times. That came out horribly wrong. Octavian is known to pull out new moves just when he needs them. Like that famous springboard moonsault. Alright, thank you. And this is what it's all for, the third party championship. Ladies and gentlemen, the challenger from Greece at seven feet tall, Octavian. And, and uh, defending the belt, our third party champion from Poland. 
Also seven feet tall, I'm pretty sure. Jaws. Gotta take a look at his belt, then squint at Octavian and put it back on, and then immediately take it back off. Jaws, Jaws like shook his head like, nah, I'm, I'm not giving it to you. Ref, now holder of every belt in existence, holding up that belt. It's Octavian, there's Jaws, and let's get this main event underway. Immediate headbutt by Jaws. These men are tall. Jaws so far has the upper hand with that big double handed choke slam. Back rake! The ref saw that, then the match would be over. But unfortunately, ref cannot see. Big kick to that now, now raked back. And a big slam to the ground. Kick to the back as well. Jaws really aiming for the back here. Now wrenching on the neck. The ref looking as if he could see what's going on. Octavian in a little bit of trouble here. Not yet able to get any offense in. Another slam to the ground. Jaws going for a third slam to the ground in a row. Octavian with a big elbow to the gut. Now an elbow to the head by Jaws. Thrown into the turnbuckle. Tossed into that tree of woe. Very easily by Jaws. What a, what a low-blowing bastard. Jaws thinks he has it won, it looks like. Looks like, he, looks like he thinks he has it won. One. Two. A two count. Jaws has the upper hand still. Pulling him to the center of the ring. To stand on him. Jaws is heavy. Big kick to the back once again. Jaws stomping in the corner. Octavian starting to get up. Punch to the gut by Octavian. This time, Luthez by Octavian. He's upset. Now wrenching on Jaws' neck. And lands all of them successfully. Now slamming Jaws' head into the ground. Octavian is losing it. He is going insane. Holy crap. The crowd is go also going insane. Big body splash from the second rope by Octavian. Following a big kick. Octavian gaining his upper hand back. Now punches to the head. Octavian aiming for that head. If you can't think, you can't fight. Big leg drop to the head like his hero Hulk Hogan. Anyway. Sweep of the leg by Jaws. Jaws is back in. Another cover attempt by Jaws. Kick out immediately at one. Jaws kicks him back down lightly. Octavian acts like he just got shot in the stomach. Another headbutt by Jaws, but that might have hurt Jaws as well. Kick to the face by Jaws. Now lifting up Octavian. This would be a good opportunity. Yes! Octavian goes, throws him into the corner. Now Octavian taunting. Oh! That's two. Oh my god, he lifted Jaws! Oh my god. Shadow Slam! Octavian gonna take full advantage of this. Oh my god, here it goes. Overdrive kick, he hits it! Oh my god, he could bury Jaws. One, two, no, he kicks out just at two. 
Octavian, though, put, bringing the fight to Jaws, lifting him, hitting his signature and finisher on him. He's going outside. What is he doing? Holy crap! A springboard leg or a springboard elbow drop there by Octavian. Didn't even know he had a springboard move besides that uh, that moonsault. Kick to Jaws. Octavian is upset. You can tell he's throwing out everything he's got in this match. Looks like he's going for pump handle suplex. No, pump handle slam. Octavian's starting to get tired. Jaws, Jaws. Jaws has got him by the throat. Jaws has got him by the throat. This could be it. No, big punch. Recovery. Oh, snap mare. Big elbow to the head. Ooh, bionic elbow there. Cover by Octavian. One, two, a two count there. Jaws is actually having his match met. Another bionic elbow by Octavian. I said Octavian with a B. Oh, it looks like he's going to go for another springboard move. Going for that elbow drop again. Hits it. And now he's upset again. Slamming Jaws' head into the ground. Oh, it looks like Jaws, Jaws is going to go for that over the shoulder there. Oh, Jaws wants something big. Jaws wants something big. Going for a claw slam. Jaw slam. Jaws wants this. This could be it for Octavian. Jaws wants to taunt though. Oh, Jaws isn't done. Standing on Octavian. Andre the Giant style. Into that nerve hold. This is a 50-50 match. Both finishers have been used. But Jaws didn't even capitalize on his. I think he really wants to just break Octavian. He wants to he wants to show him that nobody treats him like this. Kick to the gut. And a cover, this could be it. One, two, no, kick out of two. Even after that jaw slam. Looks like he might be going for a big Oh Punjabi plunge. Wait, no, it's not called that in this universe. Big brain chop. That's what it is. Ooh, big face rake with the I call everything big, but it is jaws, so I mean we we gotta be we gotta give him credit there. Jaws wants to go Oh no oh, kick to Jaws' face. Jaws goes down. Oh my god Shadow Slam! That's the second one Octavian just needs that other overdrive kick. No, he's going for a cover now. One, two, the kick out of two. Octavian is surprised and it looks like he dislocated his arm for a, a split second there. Octavian, Octavian not paying attention. As Jaws is starting to get up. Luckily he turned around, but it wasn't in time. Double handed choke slam. And there's another, another claw. There's another jaw hold there. If he tap, he might tap. He might tap. No, it's a big punch to the sternum again. There is overdrive kick out of nowhere. Could this be it for Jaws? One, two, three. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. Your winner and new third-party champion, Octavian. With an overdrive kick out of nowhere. Octavian becomes the second ever third party champion. Looks like luck is on the side of the British champions. Except for the current one. As, as the win goes to Octavian. And I know one fan in particular who's going to be very happy about this. Right there is the overdrive kick out of nowhere after that after that jugular hold. 
doesn't have an official name, but I'm gonna call it the Jaw Hold. And that was it. Octavian becomes the new third party champion, and I have to update the list a lot. This isn't this isn't Octavian's first time with a belt around his shoulder, but it is his first time on the main show. This is big. This is a big moment in his career. And not only that, but he beat Jaws, who we had previously thought unbeatable. But ladies and gentlemen, your third party champion. And this is the note that we are going to end Singularity on. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Emma Splenobi for the Splenobi Wrestling Network. And we will see you on SWN next week. Thank you for watching. We will see you next time.